Today we're going to talk about reinsurance. Now this is a global complex business and it started in the 19th century in Europe. And so a lot of reinsurance companies are based out of Europe. Now reinsurance at a very high level is basically insurance for an insurance company. Yes, even insurance companies have to have insurance. And so with that said, you know, insurance companies are basically there for people that are having their worst day, correct? So you think of a car insurance company, they're going to help someone when they have an accident. You think of a home insurance company, they're going to be there when maybe their house gets flooded. You think of a workers comp insurance company, they're going to be there when you get injured on the job. So these people are really experiencing a bad time in their life and insurance company is there to help uh, with those costs and expenses both at the you know the business they're insuring and then the claimant that got hurt. So with insurance companies it's very rare that they make income because the premium they bring in usually isn't enough to cover the amount of loss that they pay out on these claims because losses can get very expensive. So what they depend on is they mainly make their money from investments and then what they do is any you know excess you know profit or retained earnings go into what's called a surplus think of it as a bucket and this surplus the company just tries to grow and grow and grow because with regulators they want a healthy surplus numbers because if a company insurance company is going to go out of business they have to say we have enough money to cover all current claims and losses and liabilities but on top of that most i think all insurance companies are regulated to have reinsurance coverage and what this does is it's basically protection, added protection against losses, high dollar losses. We're going to go all into it, but reinsurance is adding an extra level of protection uh, for the insurance company all the way down to the person that's dealing with, you know, their worst day of their lives. Uh, because they want to be assured that that insurance company that they have business with is going to cover them at the end of the day. They're not going to go to business and say, oh, we can't do that. And so, you know, reinsurance is protection. It's insurance for an insurance company and losses are very expensive. So reinsurance steps in when, you know, losses are high or they help share in the payment of losses. And so we're going to talk about two types of reinsurance, but we're going to start to get a little technical, but I made it as easy as possible. So we're going to talk about one main type of reinsurance and within there, there's a few branches out. But let me add, let me just tell you about two different types real quick. The, the type we're going to talk about is treaty reinsurance. Now, treaty reinsurance is reinsurance of a defined book of business. So you can think of it as an umbrella covering a whole book of business for a company. So for workers comp, for example, the reinsurer will say we'll cover all your work comp business. Okay. There's something also called facultative reinsurance. Now, this is where reinsurers have the option to accept or reject each individual risk. So you can think of it as a picky eater, right? The reinsurer gets to come in and say, we'll cover that, but not that. We'll cover that, but not that. But we're going to focus on treaty reinsurance where they cover a whole book of business. Within treaty reinsurance, there's proportional and non-proportional uh, types of reinsurance. So proportional is basically they're accepting a proportion of a seeding company's premium and losses. So they're going to share in both their premium and losses proportionally. And that's usually called quota share, a quota share agreement. So we're going to talk about that quota share. So keep that in mind. Now, non-proportional contracts are basically providing protection against loss in excess of a predetermined threshold. So if there's a loss that goes above a certain limit, they're going to get covered. And usually this is the excess of loss or XOL type of reinsurance. That's the most popular, I'd say, and the one I'm most familiar with. So I'm excited to talk about that. But let's dive into both of them. So let's talk about quota share reinsurance. Now, I am a nerd with Excel. And so I made this very simple graph and a few more with, you know, explaining these things. But let's talk about quota share reinsurance. So if you look at this graph, you'll see on the left, there's the sedent and they are to retain 40% of either premium or loss. So the sedent is basically the insurance company and they have to retain 40% of either their premium or loss. You have the reinsurer, which is, you know, 60% and they are seated 
you know, that 60% from the sedent or the insurance company. So this is a contract where they said, okay, we'll do a 40-60 quota share agreement. And what that means is, let's say they, this, the sedent or insurance company has $1 of loss that comes in. Well, they have to pay 40 cents of it, but then the reinsurer has to cover the remaining 60 cents. So the insurance company will pay the dollar and then they'll reach out to the reinsurer and say, hey, we paid out a dollar in loss. You have to reimburse us 60 cents based on this contract we made. And so the same thing goes for premium. If the insurance company or sedent makes a dollar premium, they keep 40% of it and they have to cede 60% of it. So they keep 40 cents and they cede 60 cents to the reinsurer. So again, it's a proportion of the seeding uh, companies, premium and losses. So it's kind of, um, you know, simplified here. There can be a lot of added, any contract can get very complicated, but this is at the highest level how it works. And so quota share is really that first dollar coverage because literally the first dollar premium or loss gets covered by the reinsurer or shared with the reinsurer. So that's how you can think of quota share reinsurance. Now we're going to move on to non-proportional excess of loss reinsurance. This is a very popular type of agreement that I think goes on with many insurance companies. And how this works is you have a certain dollar limit that if any loss goes above that, the reinsurer will cover it. So here we have one layer that the contract specifies that says, you know, this layer is $750,000 in excess of the $250,000 retention. So basically the sedent retention down there, that's the insurance company. And then the reinsurer is above. So let's say the insurance company has a loss of $500,000. Well, the insurance company has to pay $250,000 of it, and then the reinsurer has to cover the other $250,000. And so, you know, like anything, the insurance company pays all of it, so they're going to reach out and say, hey, reinsurer, you got to reimburse us that two fifty dollars of this $500,000 loss. Now, nothing changes for the sedent or the insurance company if the loss comes in at a million dollars, because based on this contract, again, the insurance company or sedent is only responsible to uh, is only responsible to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The reinsurer would cover the remaining seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of that one million dollar loss. So this is usually how it's um, you know set up with excess of loss, and there could be multiple layers, and each one could be priced differently because again, the other one shares the premium. This one you have to pay premium separate, just like you and I do. We pay a premium for our car insurance, our health insurance. This excess of loss, uh, usually the premium is paid determined on a percentage of the earned premium that that insurance company earns. And so, like you know, many other things, there can be an annual aggregate deductible involved in these contracts. So how this works is, let's say that you know, an, an annual aggregate deductible usually happens only on the first loss that hits that deductible, or or you can have several losses that eat up that deductible. But let's just say there's one loss that comes in. We're going to keep the same example at $500,000. So in this case, the sedent has to, you know, cover that first 250, but they also have to eat up that that deductible of 250 above that. So in this case, the insurance company is responsible or the sedent for the full $500,000. But if a second claim comes in at 500,000, the deductible is already met based on that first claim, so now they only pay 250, and the reinsurer is responsible for the other 250,000. And so this is very common. It helps reduce the premium that is paid from the sedent or the reinsurance or the sorry or the insurance company. So this is just another example of how the excess of loss work. I think it's very fascinating, and there is a lot to it. Um, so you know, there's also um, with this excess of loss, there's something called uh, the cat layer. So this is called this. This what you're looking at right here. This chart, that 750 in excess of 250 layer, that's considered considered a working layer because it's most likely going to work, go to work and help cover claims. Where a cat layer is there specifically just for catastrophic events. So think of a hurricane. And so the way that works is the insurance company. You know, let's say 
this right here, they will add a cat layer on top of this. So from a million dollars up, the cat layer may cover. But that is a whole nother thing. Uh, but you know, that's really for those really, um, you know, catastrophic events that happen like hurricanes or maybe a, a terrorist attack or something like that. So it's really that ins reinsurance that an insurance company hopes it never has to use uh, because it's really for those really worst of the worst scenarios. And so, you know, hopefully this helps, um, you know, with the excess of loss, usually how it's set up, there's so many different ways it could be set up, but usually it's per loss occurrence. So let's say I get hurt, I fall off a ladder, that's an occurrence, and it's just one person, right? Let's say there's a group of people driving on the job, there's four people, they get in an accident, that's one occurrence. So that claim is going to be for four, is going to, you know, that you're going to send off to the reinsurer is going to involve four people. So those can be more expensive when it involves multiple people. Let's, let's take this a little further, just real quick, at how complex this can get. Usually one contract, whether it's quota share or excess of loss or any of the other, you know, many that are out there, their contracts are usually just for one year, okay? So let's say you have 20 years of reinsurance contracts. Every contract is going to be different, have different layers, and you're going to have to track that as an accountant, and it gets very, very complex. Uh, a lot of these contracts too, you know, they can either be a cutoff contract contract or a runoff contract. So a cutoff contract is basically the term of the contract, any loss that happens within that is going to go to that contract year. But a runoff contract is basically saying, okay, the insurance company has a policy in this contract year, but the loss happened the following year, you know, when there's a different contract year, but it's still going to be tied to when the policy was written. So even though the loss happened the following year, it's going to go back to this contract year because that's when the policy was written and initiated and set up. So just another complexity there. And then, you know, to really make things a little bit more interesting, let me show you this. Each contract can have many different reinsurers that help cover this contract. So again, the insurance company gets with a reinsurance broker, they go out to market and see what reinsurers want to participate in this contract. And those reinsurance will come in and say, I'm comfortable covering 5% of whatever loss, you know, has to be reimbursed. And so for this example, let's say this contract has eight different reinsurers, and then reinsurer one covers 5%, reinsurer two, 10% of any loss, et cetera, et cetera. So let's say the company, they're highlighted in orange, has to pay $500 in a loss, and that $500 is reimbursable by the reinsurance company. Well, the broker is going to go out and say, usually the broker handles it, is going to say, okay, reinsurers, $500 of loss, we have to reimburse this insurance company. So reinsure one will pay $25 to the, back to the insurance company, reinsure number two, $50, so on and so forth. And what makes that complicated is each contract year has different reinsurers at different percentages. And then as the accountant, you have to track that because you know reinsurer one might pay the $25 on one day and then reinsurance number four on another day. So you have to track that internally. So it gets very complicated, especially if, if you have like 20 years of reinsurance contracts and you have losses that are, you know, especially with workers' comp, it's a long tail business. You can have a loss that's being paid out for 20 plus years. So you have to go back 20 years to when that loss happened, tie it to that contract year and you know account for it correctly. So it gets very complicated, but I think it's fascinating. And I think, you know, obviously at the end of the day, the insurance company has to prove that they can cover all insureds, claims, and liabilities. And reinsurance adds that extra protection because that one loss can really harm an insurance company. So reinsurance is there to really help with that. And so this is reinsurance 101. Uh, if you guys want to know any more about reinsurance, please just feel free to put in the comments, you know, some topics around this. If you want me to go more in depth in one thing or the other, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, I really love this topic. I work, you know, disclaimer, I work in the insurance industry. I deal with reinsurance, so I have some a lot of knowledge here. And it really does get complex, but, you know, it's very fascinating. And if you're thinking of a career in it, it's a very good career, insurance or reinsurance in general. Um, but this is reinsurance, insurance for an insurance company, who would have thought? 
and let's blow your mind just a little bit more before I end this video. There's even insurance for the reinsurers. Yes, it keeps going and going. It's like a vacuum. <laughs> so with that said, guys, I appreciate your viewership. You know, I put a lot of work in. I'd appreciate subscribing to my channel. It's always good to get other people's opinions, advice, knowledge, and my channel, I think, provides great value. So I'd appreciate uh, you subscribing to my channel, liking my video, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time on Mark's Finance and Fitness.